welcome to the optical communication course today we will learn that a quantum efficiency and a led power so as we have seen earlier in the last lecture that is about a light emitting diode and its spectral pattern so now how this uh, spectral pattern obtained through this particular material so that's why we need to learn about the what will be the efficiency and a power there so we learn here the quantum efficiency and a led power now to uh, say that about a quantum efficiency that efficiency is depending upon that a two factor that is about a internal quantum efficiency and a external quantum efficiency to understand the what do you mean by a quantum efficiency we should know that for a given light emitting diode what are the excess carrier present now in general we say that a electron that will be in a p type and a holes that will be in a n type and that uh, these are nothing but a excess electrons and hole present in a n type and p type material and these are referred to be as a minority carrier and these are the minority carriers that will be created in a semiconductor material or a semiconductor diode by carrier injection at the device contact and then we need to know about what will be the densities of those excess electrons density of electrons n and holes and p so generally we can say that the excess density of electrons in the n type and holes in a p type they have the equal value because they are injected carriers and they are formed in or recombine in a pair according to the whatever the charge neutrality in the crystal there so now this carrier injection stops the carrier density that will return to the equilibrium value so you can say that the excess carrier density that will be is equal to n is equal to n0 e raised to minus t by so this one is about the excess carrier density and that will be decay exponentially with time according to the relation n0 into e to t so here n0 is the initial injected n0 is the initial injected excess electron density and so is nothing but a time constant or a carrier lifetime cost that is we can say that a carrier lifetime cost and this carrier lifetime constant that will be operating parameter of this particular device of a light emitting diode and that values that will be ranges from a milliseconds to a nanosecond and that will be depending upon that what material composition or that uh, 
what are the what structure composition of this diatomitic diode now this excess carrier these are about the, all those excess carriers that can recombine either radiatively or a non radiatively means you can say that we have this excess carrier that will be recombine radiatively or a non radiative now when we say that a radiative that excess carrier recombine radiatively so it is called as a radiative recombination and those excess carrier we say that is about a recombine non radiatively it is called as a non radiative recombination but in the case of a radiative recombination that photon of energy we say that hv that will be equal to approximately equal to the band gap of a energy so band gap of energy means what we have the valence band and a conduction band and that in between that particular valence band and conduction band there is a gap and that is about a band gap of a energy and so that that particular photon of energy that will be emitted and that is called as a radiative recombination this photon is emitted which has the energy is equal to band gap of a energy there in a non radiative recombination so what happen to so instead of the emission there so that whatever the recombination takes place and that will be absorbed okay the whatever the photon generated that will be absorbed in that region so that's why that non radiative recombination it is just like a absorb here and it will that radiative recombination it will emit the photon here and that recombination is just like what we can say that it will absorb means it generate particular heat in the particular device so means we say that here whatever the electron combination takes place electron and hole recombination takes place that will transfer their energy to the device and that will be in the form of a heat here so means we can say that for a given particular device it will generate that it will emit the photon of a light so that's why in a particular device a constant current flow is maintained in that particular led there and that current flow is because of that excess carrier that excess density of the electrons and holes and both are equal because this excess electrons and holes they are nothing but we can say that is about a injected carrier and that injected carriers are created and that will be recombined in a pair such that charge neutrality is maintained in the device so that total rate at which carriers are generated in the pair or you can say that carrier generated thermally also because above 300 k the carriers are generated so we can say that that particular rate is given by a j by qt where j is a current density and q is the electron charge and d is the thickness of a recombination so 
so that's why that ex externally supplied rate in the given particular region is equal to what a j by ut so means we can say that a thermal generation rate is equal to n by tau so that's why we can write the rate equation for the carrier recombination in the led that rate equation is equal to what dn by dt is equal to j by qd minus that is about a thermally generated that will be a n by tau here minus n by tau here. so at some equilibrium condition so this rate will be a zero and so that this if dn by dt is equal to zero in that case j by qd is equal to n by two so at equilibrium condition so dn by dt is equal to zero so then we can say we'll get that n is equal to j tau by and this particular relation gives the steady state electron density in this particular active region and that will generate a constant current flow through the led okay now this equation gives us the constant current flow in led so from this we can calculate that a internal quantum recombination internal quantum efficiency and a external quantum efficiency and through that we can find out what will be the power led power here so internal quantum quantum efficiency so that internal quantum efficiency in the given particular active region of led and that is nothing but what it generate a electron hole pair means we can say that in that particular active region that electron hole pair recombine whatever the electron hole pairs are generated that will be recombined so that internal quantum efficiency is depending upon that what will be the recombination rate we can say that a radiative recombination and a non radiative recombination so generally we say that a radiative recombination is supposed to be a rr and non radiative recombination is a rnr so that's why the internal recombination rate is equal to the ratio of a radiative recombination to the total recombination so that's why total will be what rr plus r n r that is radiative plus non radiative recombination and a non radiative recombination lifetime that is so and r is equal to n by r and r so we can write the internal quantum efficiency that will be equal to what that rr is nothing but what we can say that rr by rr plus rnr so if you put that rn rr is equal to what n by to r or rnr is equal to n by to nr in that case 
after solving we'll get that 1 by 1 plus tau r by tau n r and that will be is equal to tau r by sorry sorry tau by tau n r so that tau is nothing but what tau is nothing but what a total lifetime recombination that is a total lifetime recombination that will be a, a tau here so that's why a bulk or a total lifetime recombination that will be tau we can say that we can write express in terms of tau r plus 1 by tau and r so this tau r is nothing but what a radiative recombination rate radiative recombination and a tau and r is the non radiative recombination and this rr is nothing but a radiative recombination and a rnr is a non radiative recombination so if you calculate that a internal quantum efficiency using this so for a single junction of a led or a simple homo junction of led we will get that quantum efficiency is about a 50 percent here if we use a double hetero junction led so then we will get that quantum efficiency is about a 60 to 80 percent so means we can say that for a given particular light emitting diode that efficiency we are getting that will be depending upon that what will be the active region of the light emitting diode but what happen in this particular active region so there may be a self absorption effect so that will reduce the non radiative recombination rate so we can say that if a current is injected in a led that is the i so then we can calculate that a total recombination rate per second that will be rr plus R and R is equal to I by U. So from this we can calculate that R R is equal to what? N internal into I by U. So that will give us that R R is nothing but what? A radiative recombination and that will emit the photon. That will emit the photon or this radiative recombination that will give a total number of photon and each that emitted photon they have the energy of a HV and that will energy is equal to the band gap of energy of the given material so that's why the power generated internally in the in a LED power generated internally in a LED that will be is equal to what and internally into what i by q into hp or we can simplify it that will be internally is equal to h b i by q lambda that is about the internal power generated in a led that internal power generated that will be depending upon that what will be the active region in the given particular light emitting diode so what we can say that whichever the light that in that uh, internal generated photon 
so all that photon will not be emitted from the that device but what happened here so some of the photon emitted if we say that there are the internally generated photon and external generated photon so we so all the emitted photon will not be propagating through the fiber there so that's why we need to consider that what will be the photon emitted from this light emitting diode so that's why we need to know about that one more factor that will be external quantum efficiency so that external quantum efficiency gives that whatever the emitted power from the light emitting diode and that will be confined to the that or uh, that will be exited from the diode and that will be propagating through the fiber there so we can say here so in a external quantum efficiency that will be nothing but that ratio of the photon emitted from the light emitting diode to the number of internally generated photon so means we can say that a external quantum efficiency if you calculate that that will be a number of photon emitted number of photon emitted from the led to the number of internally number of internally generated photon means total means what we can say that for a given light emitting diode the number of photons emitted okay if we say that this one is nothing but a optical fiber sorry this one is nothing but a light emitting diode this has a confinement layer so here we can say that light emitted uh, or light generated light generated and we can say that and a guiding region and here we have the this one is about a led here this one we can say that a led facet okay and then it here we can say that it will emit the light that means we can say that these are nothing but the emitted waves okay we have the emitted waves but if supposed to be this one is about the fiber ray end here so for the given particular fiber they have some acceptance angle so if this is the acceptance angle of the given particular fiber this part because here we have a fiber now so whichever the light is emitted from this light emitting diode so all the rays whichever following the critical condition of this fiber there so that will be propagating through the fiber and those who are not supposed to be follow the critical condition so they will not emitted through the fiber supposed to be we have the optical fiber here and we are connecting but if it follows the acceptance angle of the given particular fiber then your light is emitted through the fiber there if it not follows suppose your light in this particular this one is the body light so it will be not follow so the light is emitted here and light will be reflected 
sorry light will be reflected from this particular region so those who are the light that will be propagating through this that will be emitted from the given particular fiber so likewise this rays will be propagating likewise this ray will be propagating likewise so that is what we can say that external quantum emission is nothing but what the number of photon emitted or guided to the fiber means number of photon emitted from this particular device and that will be guiding through the fiber to the total number of photon generated internally which of the photon generated internally inside the device all will not emitted to the fiber so that is about a external quantum efficiency but if you consider that a internal quantum efficiency and that internal quantum efficiency is nothing but what a number of photon generated that is the inside the device number of photon generated that is depending upon that a total number of holes or let's say that hole and electron recombination and that is nothing but the internal quantum the external quantum is here it is about the number of photon generated because of that electron hole combination here recombination there so that's why it emits the photon so how it emits means generally we say that we have this two band one is about we can say a valence band and this one is about a conduction band when that electron will come from this particular state so it will emit the photon of a light there so that is depending upon that hp here so that we have seen in the light emitting diode now our aim is about to see that external quantum efficiency what will be the number of photon emitted and that will be guided to the fiber emitted and guided to fiber divided by a total number of internal generated photon then that will gives us the quantum efficiency So means for a given particular fiber, we can say that it follows that a role of for a given particular fiber. We can say that it follows the role of what it will follow the. For a given particular fiber, it will follow the rule of this acceptance angle or a critical angle of this particular fiber. So then and then your light will be emitting from the fiber, or even if there is air, suppose, then it will follow the rule of a critical angle so that it will emit the light from the device. Otherwise, photon will be generated inside the active region, but it will not emit from the a source here from this device light emitting diode. so that's why we can say that it is depending upon that acceptance angle or a, a critical angle of this particular light okay acceptance angle or a critical angle of this particular light in this particular region so we can write that external efficiency external quantum efficiency is equal to what 1 by 4 pi zero to critical angle pi c t of pi here To twice pi sine of pi t of pi, and that t of pi is equal to frictional tra transmission coefficient or you can say that a frictional transmittivity and this particular factor which it will be depending upon that what will be the 
normal incidence to this particular device here. So if you consider that for a semiconductor material, it has the refractive index of what we can say that N1 and this particular fiber or this one is about the air now, okay, or a material where we are propagating this light, so it has the refractive index of N2. So we can calculate that a critical angle that will be of a sine inverse of N2 by N1. So here the N1 is the refractive index of this active region or a semiconductor material and N2 is the refractive index of a outside material that is maybe a fiber. So we can calculate that a tau of phi that is a fractional transmission coefficient is equal to what a 4 n1 by n into n2 by n1 plus n2 bracket square that is about a fractional transmission coefficient. So we can consider that the outside medium supposed to be it is a air instead of fiber. We consider it is air. So in that case, what happen? N2 will become say one. N2 will become say one. And supposed to be, we just consider that a external quantum efficiency so for that. To obtain the external quantum efficiency, we consider supposed to be that external medium that will be N2 become a air now, so then N2 will be equal to 1. And N1 is approximately we say it is to be N. So then the external quantum efficiency is equal to approximately equal to N into N plus 1 bracket square. Because we say that by putting that this n is 2 is equal to 1 and n1 is equal to 1 so in that case it, that t of 0 is equal to 4 n by n plus 1 bracket square and that will give us the external quantum efficiency 1 by n into n plus 1 square here. so we can calculate what will be the optical power so total optical power emitted from the LED is equal to an external the internal and that will be approximately equal to internal power by n into n plus 1 packet square. So that is about a optical power emitted from the LED that P is nothing but what a power emitted from the light emitting diode. Okay, that is nothing but a total power of a LED light emitting diode. Next time we will see that a modulation of a LED. To understand that modulation of a LED, we should know that what will be the power emitted from the light emitting diode. And we should know that how your light is emitting for a given particular bandwidth. So that's why we should know that a modulation bandwidth of a LED. So we can consider here one graph that will be related to generally we say that a bandwidth is nothing but a difference of this 3 dB point or a 3 dB frequency point. But here we can calculate for the LED. So we need to know about that how much is the photon emitted from this. So that's why we need to know about in terms of a current what will be the output current and a input current also, so that your device will perform so means we can say that what will be the power okay we talk about the power also so in general we can calculate that with respect to the 
frequency there supposed to be it is a 1.0 now so generally the graph is likewise for the optical source this is about a frequency response of a optical source and for the electrical 3d that is about a 3d bandwidth point so that will be electrically one so if you obtain this 3d point that is nothing but a 0.7 not of a 7 here and then from this to this if you draw a line that will be nothing but that electrical bandwidth that will be electrical bandwidth but a optical 3d point is that a point 5 and that is nothing but a 3db point or you can say that a optical 3db point here you can say that electrical 3db point so now a bandwidth a optical bandwidth is nothing but a half point optical bandwidth So this one is about a frequency response of a optical source, and that will represent that 3 dB point. So if you consider that a frequency response of a source, how your electro electrical input drives the signal, and that will generate a particular light, or it will produce a shape. light output value so that is nothing but a ratio because we have a, a current pulse is given to the source then it will emit the photon so that's why we can calculate that in terms of a current here so that's why we need to know about what will be the response time of this particular device so that it will generate that particular for a given electrical input it will generate the light output for electrical input it will generate the light output so that's why we need to know about the response time of a led and that response time is depending upon that what will be the size of this particular active region or a particular junction what will be the active region size and what are the doping level or dopant used in this particular active region as well as the what will be the lifetime injected carrier in that recombination region and for a given light emitting diode there is some parasitic capacitor so means we say that response time is depending upon that active region of this light emitting diode as well as the injected carrier lifetime here in that recombination region of this led as well as the parasitic capacitance of this led there so means we can say that a current is modulated means we can say pulse will gives us the photon means current is modulated at that particular frequency so we will get that a optical output power so we can write that in terms of a frequency what will be the optical power that will be equal to p of 0 1 plus omega of ti square raised to minus 1 by 2 so p0 is nothing but what a power emitted this will be a power emitted at this will be a power emitted at a zero modulation power emitted at a zero modulation frequency and we say that this particular response time that will be depending upon that a carrier lifetime in the recombination region and a capacitance there so that parasitic capacitance 
that will be very depending upon that active region so means a photo, emitted photon may be a delay because of that recombination and may be because of that parasitic capacitance in that particular active region means output will be delayed because of this factor here means output will be delayed because of the capacitance so that's why we can say that a modulation of an led it is depending upon that a response time and that will be limited to the recombination time in that particular active region or you can say that carrier recombination time at this particular active region so generally we can define in terms of whatever the electrical bandwidth or we can say that we can define in terms of a optical bandwidth what will that and so we, that optical source it will generate the power and that is about a p of w is equal to p0 of i this one and then uh, we can calculate that that ratio of the optical power that ratio that will be for the optical ratio that will be is equal to what tan log of p of w by p of 0 or tan log of i of w by i of 0 means this is about a i of w means what or sorry p of w is nothing but what is a power generated electrical power or that is nothing but a 3 db power and this p of w is nothing but a p0 by because we consider that is about a 3 dB power there, optical power. So that's why we can define that optical bandwidth that is about a 3 dB there. So we will get that a optical power ratio that I of W by I of 0 at this particular. 3 dB bandwidth. This is about a ratio. So we will get that a optical bandwidth. Means that 3 dB point occurs at that particular frequency where that ratio of this particular current is 1 by 2. And that will give us the modulation bandwidth. And that modulation bandwidth is nothing but the optical bandwidth of the your light emitting diode there. So that is about we have the light emitting diode and that light emitting diode in which that emitted light is depending upon that how will be the light is emitting from this and we can say that a response time of the generation of the given particular current pulse to the photon it is depending upon the doping level in the active region as well as the injected carrier lifetime tow in the recombination region and the parasitic component capacitance of the light emitting diode and this will gives us the how much is the optical power and that will gives us the ratio of this particular optical power and that will give the 3 dB optical bandwidth. And generally a light emitting diode, if you see that for the given light emitting diode, so that optical output power is nothing but a Lambertian pattern. So generally that optical source we say it will emit the light and this will be the pattern of a light emitting diode. So means we will we'll get that a radiation 
from this particular source and generally that for a given particular LED it is about a 120 degree there. So means Lambertian pattern means what for a given particular source we have this phi and this particular region that of phi and that will be the emitted area of light emitting diode. So we can write the equation for the Lambertian pattern of a light emitting diode that is power delivered in the given angle in the function of a theta and phi. So this will be a theta here and this will be a phi that will be the phi here and this one is nothing but the combination of this particular theta and phi. So in, in terms of a spherical coordinator coordinate we can write in terms of a r theta phi. So emission pattern for this light is of a b theta of phi is equal to b0 cos of theta. And that B0 is nothing but the radiance along the normal to the radiating surface. So radiation pattern of a source is likewise in general, it is likewise, it is about a radiation pattern of a source. And we will get that a radiance B of theta is equal to B0 of a cos, cos of theta. So means it is with respect to the cos of theta there. And if you calculate that a power generated by this LED for the step index fiber, for the step index fiber, it is equal to what PS to N A square for R S is less than equal to A here. And what do you mean by PS? PS is equal to what? A pi square R square to B0. 